Welcome to today's workshop, Integrating Social Justice Education in Your Course. Historically, the classroom has served as a platform for social change and a proving ground for new ideas. An educator's role is to help students develop critical thinking, collaboration, and reflection skills necessary to participate in a diverse society. One way to promote these skills is through social justice education. So in this workshop, we'll discover some strategies and resources to promote social justice in the classroom and raise students' awareness of social justice issues. Um, I am your presenter. Just one second here. Sorry, my the captioning was in my way of advancing the slide there. Um, my name is Amanda Smothers. I'm the Teaching and Learning Coordinator um, in the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning at NIU. I earned my PhD from NIU in 2016. I've been teaching college English for over 15 years, and I've been with CIDL since 2019, um, back when it was FACDEV. Um, I'll be taking questions throughout and at the end of the presentation, so if you have any questions related to what we're discussing, feel free to post your questions or comments in the chat thread. Um, or raise your hand um, and unmute yourself and I'll address those questions as they come up. Otherwise, you can hold on to them until the end of the, the session if you prefer to do that too. Um, in the text chat, why don't you tell us what your department or division is, what's your role, um, and what you hope to get out of this workshop. Great, thank you, Molly. And thank you, Lindsay and Jen. Great, we have um, some different disciplines represented here, which is Excellent. Um, and, you know, there's a way that you can integrate social justice education in really any discipline that's relevant for that discipline. So we'll talk about some general things. Um, but uh, when I send my follow up email to all of you who are attending here today, I'll also be looking for um, discipline specific resources for you. So if you have, you know, specific things that you're looking for, um, be sure to, you know, share that with me um, and I can give you resource those and, and then send them to you afterwards. All right, and then something else that I like to do is just a little bit of a check-in. So share an emoji with us in the chat of how you're doing today. I will share mine. I'm a little chilly today, um, but I do this with my students as well when I'm doing um, online teaching. And that just kind of gives me a gauge of where everyone's at. So maybe if someone's not having a great day, they could just share an emoji and I'll be cognizant of that. All right, as you're doing that, I'll go over the workshop objectives. So by the end of this workshop, um, participants will be able to identify the benefits of integrating social justice education in their courses, choose approaches to and strategies for including social justice in their courses to help students develop critical thinking, collaboration, and reflection skills. 
and promote social justice in the classroom and raise students' awareness of social justice issues. Um, so it seems like we have some, you know, some positive emojis and some injured and sick and maybe blah emojis going on here. So um, don't worry, I won't make you go into any breakout groups or anything. I know that's when I tend to lose people. So, <laughs> um, so, so why social justice? First of all, social justice education has beneficial long-term effects. It helps students do a few different things. It helps them develop the empathy, self-reflection, and critical thinking skills that are necessary to engage in meaningful dialogue. It also helps students identify and practice how to respond to community and societal needs. And it helps them express how their social identities impact their engagement with others. One important concept to understanding the importance of integrating social justice into our courses is Karl Marx's social reproduction theory. And that shows the ways that social inequality is passed on from generation to generation. So what does that have to do with education? Basically, we need an intersectional view of education. We can't talk about education without addressing race and class and gender and ability, sexuality and politics, because education is a political act. Um, if we don't consider that intersectionality within our courses, then we're essentially ignoring the identities that are present in our classrooms and in our communities. Um, but agreeing that social justice is important and then, then actually implementing social justice pedagogy are two different things. We want to move beyond just recognizing that social justice is important to finding ways to promote it meaningfully within our courses um, in discipline appropriate ways. So, for example, uh, we might think of education as an equalizer, but there are schools with significantly fewer resources than others. There are many students, generally um, our minority students or historically marginalized students who are stereotyped as soon as they walk onto our campus and into our classrooms. And one way to fight back against those deeply entrenched systemic racist ideologies and policies that are inherent in our educational system is to embrace social justice pedagogy. So it might seem more self-evident or intuitive to integrate social justice pedagogy into the humanities, for example. But many educators wonder why and how maybe STEM or STEAM fields or even foreign languages should integrate social justice education into their courses and programs. According to experts, scientists of color are more likely than their white peers to work on solving problems in their fields that have clear connections to equity issues. Unfortunately, there is a scarcity of students of color in STEM fields. Um, for instance, while Black people are 12% of the U.S. population and 13% of our undergraduates um, or undergraduates in the United States as a whole, they represent under 5% of undergraduate degrees in math, computer science, civil engineering, chemical engineering, and mechanical engineering. So why are so few Black students studying in the STEM field? Aside from what I already mentioned, which is the, the structural causes in K-12 education, there's also a disconnect between um, our Black students' interests in STEM faculty and employers' embassies. Black college students tend to be interested in social justice, but white STEM faculty and employers tend not to make social justice a focus within their fields. And that dissonance might make it more difficult for students of color to see how they fit into the field. In other words, those students aren't leaving the discipline because they can't do the work. They're leaving because they don't see themselves in STEM fields as represented in their classes and in the profession. And that disconnect also puts our STEM industries and infrastructure at uh, an, a disadvantage because many social injustices require technical solutions. So for example, um, our black and brown communities tend to be disproportionately affected by the consequences of climate change. And social justice minded engineers are needed to recognize and solve those infrastructure issues. Uh, also, fixing healthcare disparities and inequities requires social justice focused medical expertise and technology. Um, and STEM disciplines, specifically in college educators in general, really need to reflect on how they view their students of color. So, consider whether students of color are stereotyped as underprepared, even with evidence to the contrary, or that they don't belong or are unwelcome in the field. Another issue to, to think about is the disconnect between the lived experiences of students and the focuses in our classes. So for example, having students gain technical knowledge and experience for its own sake 
rather than helping them connect what they're learning to how they can affect social change. So if STEM educators emphasize social justice issues in their courses, it's more likely that STEM workers of all backgrounds will begin tackling those issues. Um, I'm just gonna share a quote from the book from Equity Talk to Equity Walk, which I do recommend. Um, it's a short book, um, but it's really interesting. And I've done a book chat on this one in the past as well. Um, but in the introduction to the book, it says the growing racial tensions in our society and the impact it has had and will have on our individual psyche and who we are as a nation cannot be ignored and dismissed as isolated incidents because they keep adding up. Racism permeates every aspect of our country and the time to address the persuasive impact of ideologies fueled by hate is now. Another um, book that I recommend is, is, is Everyone Really Equal? Um, and in this one, they say early on, society is structured in ways that make us all complicit in systems of inequality. There's no neutral ground. Thus, an effective critical social justice course will unsettle mainstream perspectives and institutional discourses, challenge our views about ourselves, what we think we know about society, how it works and our place in it. Unfortunately, when we are new to the examination of social relations, we only know one way to respond to the ideas studied in the course. If the professor is saying that I participate in systems of injustice, such as racism, they're saying that I'm a bad person, a racist. Later, we should come to understand that this is not what our professors are saying, and that binary ways of conceptualizing these issues, good, bad, racist, not racist, are part of what prevents us from seeing them. And we see this, um, you know, especially in current events in Florida with the, the um, restrictions on what faculty can teach and um, and on being able to teach um, the history of our country and how race plays a role in, in systems of oppression. Um, so this is definitely very relevant to us today. Um, another quote from Is Everyone Really Really Equal is that one of the most difficult concepts that students have when it comes to social sciences and humanities is intellectual humility. Um, and the text points out an essential lesson that students need to learn and internalize, which is that opinions are not the same as informed knowledge. Um, so a little bit, they expand on this a little bit later in the book, and they say critical thinking is not simply having different opinions. Critical thinking results in an informed perspective after engaging with new evidence and accounting for multiple layers of complexity. Simply having opinion uh, is not predicated on any accounting for new information or understanding our complexity. Popular opinions tend to be superficial and anecdotal and do not require that we understand the issue at all. For example, although someone might disagree that social injustice exists to be credible, they must root their argument in an understanding of the knowledge that has already been established and demonstrate how their opinion brings new evidence for consideration. So if you're looking for you know, more than just this workshop as a uh, kind of delving into these issues of social justice education and how they might apply to your classes. These are two books that, that I definitely recommend that you, you take a look at and we have both of them in our library. All right, so let's talk about approaches to uh, including social justice education in our courses. So first is to acknowledge our students, to teach our students in a way that's that's humanizing and affirming, we need to know who they are and where they come from. That means learning about their communities, their backgrounds, their cultures, their families. It means acknowledging how they experience the world, including the ways that social justice touches their lives. So one strategy, um, and obviously it's past the first week of class right now, but thinking ahead to next semester, take the opportunity in the first week or so of class to get to know your students, create connections with your students. Let them know that you see them. If they feel connected to uh, the bigger classroom community, they're more likely to engage and persist and they're more likely to feel connected to, to the um, campus community as a whole. And by getting to know your students, you can tailor your teaching to the social justice issues that are important to them. So that's the first step is just acknowledging students and getting to know them. Also, we need to be honest about our biases. We all, have biases as a result of 
you know, living in the United States, which was founded upon white supremacy. So it's important to reflect on what our personal biases and prejudices might be, whether they're explicit or implicit, um, and acknowledging and working actively to address and counteract our biases will make us better social justice educator, educators specifically, but just also better educators in general. We can't ignore our biases. We can't pretend that we don't have them if we want to work towards a more just society and a more equitable educational experience for our students. Um, another thing that's like kind of a, a little bit um, bigger, and this is when we're talking about or thinking about how to design our classes as a whole is backwards design. So using a backwards design framework that's centered in equity and inclusivity um, and learning how it might connect to our content area. So think about where you want your students to be by the end of the semester and then work backward from that goal or that outcome to develop the instructional methods and the learning activities and the, the assessments that'll help your students achieve those goals. Um, it'll also help us avoid tokenism or paying lip service to social justice while ultimately just maintaining the status quo. So what are your disciplinary and social justice goals for your course? Think about that first before you think about the strategies to incorporate those goals into your class and how you might achieve those goals. Um, so again, consider those first so that you can build your course to reflect those goals and synthesize them, weave them into your class meaningfully rather than just sprinkling you know, your existing course that you've already built out without thinking about the design in this way um, with social justice topics superficially because then they won't have clear goals, they won't have clear connections to your students in the discipline. Um, another strategy is to discover what students already know. Our students enter into our classrooms with prior knowledge. That knowledge is tied to content areas connected to their own culturally relevant perspectives of the world. So we want to embrace what our students already know. We want to find out what their prior knowledge is. We want to try to um, implement it meaningfully into our curriculum. Let them teach each other what they already know. And then we can work to build new knowledge together with them and expand their knowledge to areas where they might have less experience and expertise. So for example, a Black student might come into a public health course with experience and knowledge of disparities in healthcare for um, and systemic racism's effect on Black patients. So we can use that knowledge and personal experience and build upon it by providing students with um, first the opportunity to share that knowledge without the expectation that they're speaking for their uh, cultural group, but also by providing students with more information about those systems and why they persist and allowing them to examine how they can work towards dismantling those systems of healthcare um, oppression. So really it's providing students with this space to share their knowledge. Um, and there's a, that fine line that we want to, um, to straddle of, you know, allowing them the space to share that but not expecting them to speak for their cultural groups or their, their race groups um, or putting them on the spot and, and forcing them to do that. So it's just opening it up to the opportunity to do that and making them feel safe enough to share that information uh, in your class and with their, their um, fellow students. Um, social media is another um, issue that we'll want to or we could address um, when talking about social justice. Social media platforms are where a lot of our students encounter and engage in social justice issues. Um, and that includes bullying, um, racial discrimination, gender stereotyping, LGBTQIA plus discrimination. Um, so exploring those firsthand experiences with our students can provide some relatable examples for them of social injustice. So they might, you know, not, um, be thinking about bigger issues of social justice, but if we can make it relevant to our students' um, lives and their experiences, then we can kind of pull them in with that. Um, so again, those firsthand experiences, we can, we can have relatable examples of social injustice with our students that could be explored as part of where we get to know our students and learn about their experiences, their knowledge, their backgrounds. Um, but it could also be used as a jumping off point for bringing up those issues in the context of our course curriculum. 
Um, another strategy is to introduce our students to activists through different media. We can introduce books, movies, video clips, articles, multimedia compositions, any other media type. Um, we can feature current activists as well as historic figures, um, introduce well-known activist celebrities like musicians or actors that are relevant to our students to spark those discussions. Um, also, by introducing students to activists who are diverse and close to their age, that might help them connect with those activists and the issues that they're advocating. It'll also help them see the relevance of social justice to their own lives and experiences, and it might help them see how they can make an impact on social justice issues. Um, and that social justice activism isn't exclusive to older citizens. Um, young activists have made and continue to make significant contributions. So, for example, um, survivors of the, the mass shooting at Mar uh, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, like David Hobb and X Gonzalez, who've led a movement aimed at gun control policies, Greta Thunberg, who became a household name at, at age 16 for her climate change protests, Marley Diaz, an activist who launched the hashtag 100 or 1000 Black Girl Books that highlighted literature featuring, featuring Black female protagonists when she was just 11 years old. Um, so finding those activists that are connected to the social justice issues you want to explore in your classroom and then making it relevant to our students um, and by raising that awareness of those social justice issues and providing concrete examples of the difference that these social justice advocates can make, we can help students become more so socially conscious um, adults to advocate for social justice. Um, you can also invite guest speakers to talk more directly with your students. So for example, um, a local community activist could help engage students and give them more personal and local context for broader social justice concerned concerns. Um, a local labor union representative, for instance, could discuss with economic students how labor unions affect the distribution of income in union friendly states versus right to work states. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity for uh, bringing experts in to talk to students about these issues too. Um, also, something that's going to really make these issues more timely for our students is to talk about me recent media cover coverage of timely issues like immigration issues or racial injustice, healthcare inequality, climate change impacts, voting rights, economic inequality, um, uh, global conflicts that could help teach students valuable skills like critical thinking, separating fact and informed knowledge from opinion and fake news. Um, there's a lot of opportunity there. It'll also help expose students to diverse perspectives, help them recognize injustice and provide them with an outlet to express those perspectives. So for example, um, from, you know, the, the, the pandemic. You could you have used at that time media coverage of COVID-19's impact on nursing homes to discuss racial and socioeconomic inequities in elder care uh, and attitudes towards aging in a relevant family and consumer sciences course, for example. Um, another idea is to use project-based learning um, so integrating learning activities and projects that promote engagement with social justice. For example, project-based learning activities could allow small groups of our students to focus on specific causes or issues, discuss their unique viewpoints, personalize the learning experience, and create a relevant deliverable to demonstrate what they've learned through that process. Um, for an English composition course, for example, students could use project-based learning to collaborate on crafting proposals for solutions to local issues in social justice, or to write effective persuasive letters to local, state, or congressional representatives. Um, another just really important thing to do is to ask students what matters to them. If we want it to be relevant to our students, we need to find out what is relevant to them. What do they consider relevant? Um, so what do they want to focus on? What are they passionate about? What affects them on a personal or familial community level? Allow students to connect what they're learning in our classes to what matters to them and guide them as they're making those connections so that they'll be more engaged learners. Um, so for example, sports leadership is dominated by white men. 
while student athletes um, and students as well as professional athletes are a diverse group that's not necessarily reflected in leadership. Um, around 79% of athletic directors are white men, nearly 90% of faculty athletics representatives are white, as are 87% of head football coaches and 100% of conference commissioners. In the NFL, for example, head coaches of color represent only 13% of all head coaches. So a sports manage management course, for example, could examine those racial gaps in sports leadership careers for students who are interested in breaking down systemic barriers to access success in the field and examining what institutions say publicly about diversity versus the inequities that their internal policies produce and perpetuate. Um, also, something that we can do throughout our course is uh, encouraging questioning from our students. Encourage them to question the things that they're learning, the things that they're reading, um, the materials that we're sharing with them. A social justice classroom is one that is critical in nature, so we want to encourage that questioning and that, that criticism. Uh, we should be constantly encouraging students to question the world around them as well as the schools that they attend and their, our own teaching and learning practices. So we want to give our students this painful as that may be for us, they're, you know, nerve wracking, um, give them opportunities to critique and construct their own opinions and interpretations of our teaching, of our overall university structure, um, as well as issues within our unique professional disciplines. So some of the benefits of social justice education for students, um, when students learn to recognize and think more critically um, about injustice, they're more likely to become informed and engaged citizens. They are also more likely to turn that knowledge into action. So as educators, we could expose students to the different forms that social justice advocate, advocacy can take. Um, and that can include a lot of different things. Um, educating themselves about social justice issues is just first and foremost. Um, engaging in conversations with friends and family members, advocating for social justice in their schools and in their workplaces, contacting government officials to advocate for change, um, just letting them know that they can contact government officials um, and how to do so, participating in or leading fundraising efforts for um, different social justice issues and organizations. Uh, making choices to support or avoid businesses based on ethical behavior, uh, such as to whom or which organizations that company donates money, uh, organizing group events or discussions, participating in rallies or meetings or protests, and just pointing out social injustice and standing up for others when it's appropriate and safe to do so. So if we truly want to change the world to make it more socially, more socially just, then education is a great place to start. Um, and considering the rapid transformation of the United States, socially, culturally, racially, linguistically, the path to that more just education system is to adopt a focused pursuit of social justice teaching and learning practices. Um, so I wanna leave it open for questions. And also if you have any specific um, resource needs that I can research for you and then um, get some resources for you on um, then I want to be able to do that as well. So any questions or comments or ideas of, you know, maybe how you could implement social justice education in your own courses and disciplines. This is Molly. Um, I actually, do you want me to just shout out or? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, this semester I'm piloting a few different like reflect and connect activities that include a preparation portion an in-class discussion and then a mini essay afterward reflecting on those first two components of the prep and the and and this first one we did was on implicit bias and they did a couple we had we've had a like a pre or a mini lesson and then they did some prep work had a discussion and now they're writing their reflections up in a mini essay so now my thought is like, I want to be teaching them about implicit bias and, and have that conversation, but I'm, I'm unsure of 
what some next steps are. Like, how can I get them from recognizing that they have these biases, reflecting on those, starting and then doing that work of dismantling the, those things in order to get them to the point of advocacy? Like, I guess I'm I'm a little bit uncertain about the the logical steps to take if it's in a semester, if it's across an entire program and creating a plan for that across their university program, which might be too big. So let's talk about the class. <laughs> like <laughs> what are what are like the next logical steps after going through or after, you know, having them discover their own implicit biases? Yeah, I think, you know, it's something that's going to that takes a you know, it's a lifetime. We're not gonna ever completely get rid of our implicit biases, but I think that the a really great place to start is just paying attention um to where those biases might be impacting. So questioning ourselves um, and maybe having them keep a journal throughout the entire semester, not just in class, but outside of class and how they have noticed their biases creeping up on them or or popping up. Um, We also have one of our inclusive teaching coordinators here. I don't want to put you on the spot, Lindsay, but I am putting you on the spot. Do you have any other suggestions um, as well for kind of initial steps? Um, yeah, no pressure. Um, no, I think that that's a great idea. Um, I think that if there's a way to, um, to do that personal observation and then tie it to some sort of, um, group locally or on campus and see like, okay, this is what you've observed about either yourself or about the world around you. Um, what things can you do to change that or to help other people that are experiencing these issues and sort of like um, make community connections that way. I think that that's like a super useful way of um, tying these things together and encouraging them to become advocates and also just get involved, especially in the community. So um, I think that that would be my next step like thinking about it, like um, having this eagle's eye view right now. Um, but I also want to say that I I love that you're doing this, Molly. Like that's, this is great. This is amazing. And I hope more people are doing this in their, in their classes too. But uh, this sounds like a, a great way to really encourage students, especially um, thinking about their position uh, in education and how much power and how much uh, they're going to impact other people, like getting them to step back and think about that. Like that's, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Yeah, I agree. Um, You know, anytime you can tie it to what they're in your program for, you know, how might this affect my students? You know, if I let this implicit bias uh, affect the way that I interact with students or the services that I provide or the education that I provide my students is definitely having them think ahead too is is great in addition to thinking about the now. Right, any other um, comments or, or questions that anyone has? Hi, this is Stephanie. I apologize. I had to join a couple minutes late. I was in the car. Um, but I did join when you were talking about a couple of the books that you would recommend. And I was wondering if there was any place, I know you said the library had them, but is there any place, could you just link the titles again? Cause I couldn't write them down. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely link the titles again. Um, Perfect. I can give you the permalinks to them in the library in the chat here. Yeah, that'd um, be fantastic. And then just kind of going off um, what Molly and Lindsay were talking about, I'm thinking next semester, I teach, I'm in nursing um, and I teach the um, OB course. So, you know, maternal and infant health is a big area of uh, health disparities right now. And I've been wanting to do something with really bringing this more into the classroom because we talk about social justice, we talk about inequitable care, but I don't have anything assigned to it. So I just wanna say, I really appreciate Molly, your suggestion about the journals. Um, I was thinking of trying to do something like that because I want them to recognize 
not only their own implicit, implicit biases, but when they go to the healthcare setting, um, we know that there are a lot of inequities in care from our healthcare providers. And I think it would be really interesting to see them reflect on not only what they feel or what maybe some of their implicit biases come up, but also what they're seeing. It's going to be on probably sad to see what they're experiencing, but um, it definitely our our nursing profession is predominantly white female. So we're becoming more diverse, but we have a really long way to go. So I think this would be a really key key um, topic to to make sure that we cover in, in nursing from day one. Definitely. Thank you so much for that. Thanks. Any other thoughts? And I did link those, those permanent links to the NIU library um, for the two books, the From Equity Talk to Equity Walk, and Is Everyone Really Equal? An Introduction to Key Concepts in Social Justice Education. And I'll send them via email as well in my follow-up, just in case you misplaced those. Any other thoughts or questions or comments? Um, I think maybe, well, so maybe a resource that people, has anyone here heard of the Wakelet that's through the College of Education that um, Eric Hunko has been building and kind of been working with to build? I'll take that as a no. <laughs> um, I'm going to see if I can go find the link and share, but there is, so there is a lot um, that has to do with equity and, and there's this one particular website, it's called Better Lesson. And it, they're mostly lessons that are, that are written for kids in like K-12 schools, but that's where I was able to take between that. And then also consulting with, with Eric Hunko, um, was able to come up with some ideas for the activities that I was doing in class about implicit bias. Um, but I can also link, there's a, um, it's a culturally responsive teaching master series that is free that people can access as well. Um, that gives you ideas for different lessons or different activities you can do in your own class. And you can find them that are subject-based as well. And I think they have some college, um, some that focus in on college courses, but I'll, I'll put that in the chat. That's great. Thank you. And I will um, see if we can get that put up on our CIDL website as well, those resources. Any other resources that anyone is aware of on campus um, that are department specific around social justice education um, that they would like to, to share with everyone? Or any other comments? And of course, I'll I'll share anything that's shared with me out to everyone who attended here today too. And I'll send these these resources out too. I have a, a bunch of them that I'll be sending out. But if you think of anything um, that you need from me, just let me know. Uh, you can just email me if, if it's before I send out my, my email later today um, or in response to that email, um, any resources that you need that I can help find for you, I will do so. Um, and uh, thank you so much for, for joining me today to talk about integrating social justice education in our classes. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me um, and I'll send that email out to everyone who attended today's workshop with links to the resources that are mentioned um, and any of the resources that you, you need from me um, and a recording of this session. Um, and I'll be sending that out later today, um, but have a great week. And again, feel free to contact me at any time.